welcome back today i'm going to discuss about magic square this is a very interesting uh, topic generally with computer science uh, what actually is magic square uh, it is actually you can imagine it to be a matrix a two into two matrix where the sum of each row column and diagonals are always equal here i have given as an example a three into three matrix where the sum of each row, column and diagonals are all equal. You can see over here the sum 6 plus 1, 7, 7 plus 8, 15. So 7, 5, 12, 12, 3, 15. 9, 2, 11, 11, 4, 15. Even the diagonals are 15. 6, 5, 11, 11, 4, 15. Even this diagonal is 15. 8, 5, 13, 13 to 15. Even the sum of the columns are 15. 7, 6, 13, 13 plus 2, 15. So you can see in a magic square, the sum of each row, column and diagonals are always equal. To make it more tougher, what they have said that each of the element of the matrix should be different from each other. It should be unique. There should be a repetition of numbers. Had there been a repetition, what would have happened? We could have put the same number everywhere and we would have still got a matrix where the sum of each row, column and diagonals are equal. However, this is not the case here. What is the first thing we require is each of the elements of the matrix should be unique and the sum of each row, column and diagonals should always be equal. Now the question arises, how do we generate it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very simple technique where we are going to generate an odd sized magic square. That means we'll have a odd size matrix where we are going to insert these numbers automatically so that we get a magic square. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to generate a 3 into 3 magic square. Of course, I'm just telling you 3 into 3, but it is extendable to 5 into 5, 7 into 7, 9 into 9, any odd size matrix you will be able to create it. The logic is totally general in nature. So a generalized logic has been created for an odd size matrix. Now let's start with the 3 into 3 matrix. What we do is first of all we will draw an empty matrix as you can see over here. First of all we need to understand the logic and then we will go for the program. So this is the first row, this is the second row, this is the third row. Similarly this is the first column. This is the second column, this is the third column. That is, we have taken a two dimensional array of size 3 into 3, odd size. So the size is 3, you have to keep that in mind. Now the logic behind this is, we'll start inserting numbers from 1 to 9, because this is a 3 into 3 matrix, so 1, 2, 3 square, that is 9. If it is a 5 into 5 matrix, 1 till 25. So the first number we are going to insert is, one. Now the question arises, where do I insert? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to insert this one, that is the first number, in the first row middle column. That is the central column of the first row. That is the place where I'm going to place the number one. Now the question arises, how do we determine that? Even we can determine that also in a generalized way. I'm going to show you how. So suppose R represent row and C represents column. So the first number that is 1 should be inserted in the central column of the first row. So the first row happens to be 0. And the central column, central column how do we find out? What we are going to do is we are going to divide the size of the matrix that is 3 in this case by 2. Integer division we are going to go for that. So 3 by 2 happens to be 1. So this will give us the position of the middle column. If it is a 5 into 5 matrix, 5 divided by 2, that is 2. We are going for integer division. So that means 2 is the index of the central column of a 5 into 5 matrix. In our case, in this case, for a 3 into 3 matrix, 1 is the index of the central column. So what we are going to do, we are going to put the or insert the first number in the first row, that is 0th row and column 1. So this is the place where we are going to insert the first number. As mentioned earlier, we are going to insert all numbers serially, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to subtract 1 from both row and column. This is what we are going to do. 
So let us subtract 1 from both row and column. So this happens to be minus 1 and this happens to be 0. Now you see minus 1 is not a valid index. So what we do is to determine which will be the next position or index inside the matrix, we add the size of the matrix to this negative index. So what is the size of the matrix? Since it is a 3 into 3 matrix, we are going to add 3. So what do we get? We get 2 and this is 0. So the next number will be inserted in row 2, column 0. So row 2, column 0, we are going to insert the next number, that is 2. Again, we are going to do the same thing, that is subtract 1 from both row and column. So subtract 1 from both row and column. So this happens to be 1 and this happens to be minus 1. Again, we have an invalid index, that is negative index. So what we do? Again, the same logic, we are going to add the size of the matrix to it. That is plus 3. So this is still 1 and this happens to be 2. So the next number will get inserted in row 1, column 2. Now, here we have a slight change. The number which you've just inserted, if it happens to be the multiple of a 3 to 3 sized matrix, what we are going to do is, instead of subtracting 1 from both row and column, we are going to add 1 to the row only. Column will remain unchanged. So we are going to add 1 to the row and that will be the index of the next number. So what it means is when we get the number 3, we are going to add 1 to the row. When we get the number 6, we are going to add 1 to the row. For a 5 into 5 matrix, when we get the numbers 5, we are going to add 1 to the row. When we get the number 10, we are going to add 1 to the row. Similarly, 15, add 1 to the row. So all the multiples of the size of the matrix, in such situation, we are not going to subtract 1. In such situations, we are going to add 1 to the row. So since 3 got inserted, so what we do is, we add 1 to the row. So what do we get? We get 2, 2. So 2, 2 is the next position of the number, next number. So row 2, column 2, 4. Again 4, 4 is not a multiple. So as usual, we are going to go for subtraction. Minus 1, minus 1 from both row and column. And this time both row and column are valid indexes. So we need not worry. What we are going to do is we are going to put the next number in index 1 and 1. That is row 1, column 1. So this is what we get, 5. Now again says 5 is not a multiple. So subtract 1 from both row and column. So minus 1 and minus 1. So what we get is 0, 0. So in 0, 0 index, we are going to insert the next number, 6. Now again, 6 is a multiple of the size of the matrix. So the logic behind this is, we are going to add 1 to the row. So 0, 0 was the last index. So add 1 to the row. So we get 1, 0. So the next number will get inserted in 1, 0. That is 7, row 1, column 0. Again, since this is not a multiple, what we are going to do is, we are going to subtract 1 from both row and column. Again, we get a negative in index. So what we do? We add the size of the matrix to it. That is, we add 3. So 0, 2. So the next number will get inserted in row 0, column 2. So this is the place where the next number will come. Row 0, column 2. Now, although we know that 9 should be inserted over here, but still this logic is still applicable. We subtract 1 from both row and column. So here you can see we get minus 1, here we get 1. So what we do, we add size, that is plus 3, because this is a negative index, so we get 2, 1. So the next number, 9, will get inserted in row 2, column 1, that is 9. So you see how easily we can generate a magic square. So the logic behind this is, what we do, we first insert the first number, that is the first natural number, 1, into the central column or the middle column of the first row. And then how do we find the remaining index? We subtract 1 from both row and column, provided it is not, a, the number which is inserted into the matrix is not a multiple of the size of the matrix. In that case, we subtract 1 from both row and column. Now, upon subtraction, if it happens that we get a negative index, that is minus 1, which you have seen over there, we are going to add the size of the matrix to it. That is, if it is a 3 into 3 matrix, we are going to add 3. If it is a 5 into 5 matrix, we are going to add 5. 
However, if it is a multiple of the size of the matrix, in that case, we add 1 to the row to determine the next index. So, this is what we had seen when we got 3. We add 1 to determine the next position. Similarly, when we got 6, we add 1 to determine the next position. Similarly, for a 5 into 5 matrix, when we get the numbers 5, 10, 15, 20, in such situations, the next index will always be 1 more than the row. So, this process will continue until we insert all the numbers. For a 3 into 3 matrix, all numbers from 1 to 9 gets inserted. So, 9 times you have to repeat the same steps. For a 5 into 5 matrix, you have to insert all numbers from 1 to 25. Once you insert all these numbers serially, one after the other, you see, <coughs> it gets automatically arranged in such a way that the sum of each row, column and diagonals are equal. Along with that, there will not be any repetition of number. So the second characteristic of a magic square is also retained. That is, all the numbers should be unique. So now you can see that uh, we are going to write a program that is going to generate a magic square. I've taken a class named magic and I've taken a method or a function named generate where I'm taking the size of the matrix as parameter. I've taken it as INTN, INTN. I assume that the user is going to enter an odd number because uh, this particular logic is applicable to odd size matrix only. So here you can see I've taken a variable x which I'm going to use to generate all possible natural numbers from 1 to n square. And this is the matrix I am declaring dynamically of size n into n. I've taken the first index that is the first index of the row which happens to be 0 because that is what I mentioned earlier that is we are going to insert the first number 1 inside the first row that is whose index is 0. The first index of the row is 0 and column is the size of the matrix divided by 2. This is going to give you the index of the middle column that is if it is a 3 into 3 matrix so 3 by 2 will give you 1 that is the index of the middle column. Similarly if it is a 5 into 5 matrix 5 by 2 will give you 2, that is the index of the middle column of a 5 into 5 matrix. So these are the preparations which we do. Now we start with the generation of the numbers. That is all the numbers that is going to get inserted into the matrix. So we start a for loop starting from 1 till n square. x plus plus because we want all the natural numbers. Now what we do is inside the matrix we insert the first number that is x. So you can see for a 3 into 3 matrix, r happens to be 0 and column happens to be 1. So the first number that is when the value of x is 1, inside the index 0, 1, the first natural number 1 gets inserted. Now what we do, what I said was, if the number which you just inserted happens to be the multiple of the size of the matrix, then what we do, we add 1 to the row. This is what you had seen when we got the numbers 3 and 6. So when it was 3, we added 1 to the row. Similarly, when we got the number 6, still then we added 1 to the row. And if it is not a multiple, as usual, we are going to subtract 1 from both row and column. So here, we are going to put a check. If the number x happens to be a multiple of the number n, then what we do is, we add 1 to the row. So I can write r++. plus plus. Otherwise, we are going to subtract 1 from both row and column. This is what we are going to do. Now, upon subtraction, if the number happens to be negative, what we are going to do? We are going to add the size of the matrix to it. So, here we are going to put a check. If R happens to be less than 0, then add N to it. N is the size. Similarly, if C happens to be less than 0, then add the size of the matrix to it. So, that's it. This is the entire logic of a magic square. You see, once again, I am going to read it out. This particular loop is going to generate all possible numbers that will get inserted into the matrix. That is, if it is a 3 to 3 matrix, this loop runs from 1 to 9 because those are the possible numbers which we are going to insert into the matrix. Similarly, if it is a 5 to 5 matrix, this loop runs from 1 to 25. That is, all possible numbers which will get inserted. Once you do this, there is no possibility of getting any number repeated. So, you will always have every number unique without any repetition. Now, what we do first? First, we insert the number x where x happens to be 1 in the first row middle column. That is what we have found over there. So after inserting, what we do is we check whether the number inserted happens to be a 
multiple of the size of the matrix or not. This is what we have done. If x modulus n, n is the size of the matrix, happens to be 0, we add 1 to the row. So, if it is not a multiple, we subtract 1 from both row and column. And after that, we check whether the row index became less than 0 or not. That is what we got when I was showing you the logic. If it happens to be less than 0, that is we got minus 1. We will add the size of the matrix to it. So for a 3 to 3, we add 3. For a 5 to 5, we add 5. So for a n into n matrix, we add n units. Same thing we do for the column as well. Now this will continue. This entire process will get repeated until all the numbers from 1 till the square of the number gets inserted into the matrix. Now we are left out with nothing. We are simply going to print the matrix to display the output. So that's pretty simple. You can... Uh, Assume this is a continuation from here. I'm trying to print it like a matrix and that is the end of the function block. This is the end of the class block. So this part is the generation of the matrix and this is simply printing the matrix row by